Hello students, today we are going to discuss about section D which carries four mark each. Now in this question, uh, in this section, you will get to see eight questions. Uh, three questions are optional. So uh, I, if you don't know one question, you can opt for the other one. Now, as you know that it's a four mark question and you have eight questions. So eight into four is 30, 32 marks. So that is pretty much handy. Yeah. So it's very important for you to understand this section very clearly and you will get to see that uh, in the finals. Let's hope that uh, it, you will be getting you something similar questions. So, but understand the concept here. I just don't want to just simply solve it. I want you to understand the concept here. That is very important. Moving on to question number 23, which is an odd question. Here, question says that a train two hours less for a journey of 300 kilometer that means there is a train which is moving a distance of 300 kilometer. Yeah, 300 kilometer. And it's been said that if the speed had increased by 5 kilometer. So there is a train. Okay, maybe like I will just draw a bit of, of bogies and all those stuff to get an idea. Like, okay, this is a train. So it's a train. It's moving. From here and it, it it reached here. That means altogether it took or the distance here is 300 kilometer. And you know that it's traveling with a certain speed. And it's been said that two hours less would be the journey if it has increased the speed by five. Now to understand the concept, I would like you to uh, I would like to explain in this way. Before, like I have told you, just understand the concept and then move for, go forward and solve the question. Now, I am traveling 20 kilometers by a car or any such vehicle. I am just traveling from here to here, that 20 kilometer. And right now, I am actually at a speed of 30 kilometer per hour. And it took me around 5 hours to reach that distance. Fine. And again, I am traveling the next day. And if I increase the speed uh, to 60 km per hour, if I increase, that means 20 km per hour, I increase the speed. And took the and that same distance I covered within 3 hours. And if someone is asking me how much less time you took to reach right now, if I increase the speed, what would be? Then it would be 5 minus 3, that would be 2 hours less. Isn't it? 2 hours less. The question is the same concept here. A train two hours less for a journey of 300 kilometer. So 300 kilometer is again traveling at the same distance, but usual with a usual speed as well as increasing a speed by five. Then calculate the usual speed. That is what we are supposed to find. Now, whenever you see a question like this, make sure that you take the let x as or take the x as the question what you are supposed to find. So let the usual speed of the train be x kilometer per hour. Okay. So I took x kilometer per hour as usual speed. That means to say that at the end of the day we need to solve something and need to find the value of what x fine now as you know here that we are actually playing with the time so we need to find we have two situations here one the train usually tra traveling with a usual speed the other one the same distance the train is traveling by increasing a speed of five so two cases so we need to play with the time here because we know that if you got the first case time and the second case time, when you subtract it, it is going to be 2 hours because you have saved that 2 hours. So, the, the answer goes like this. When, okay, usual speed, usual speed. How to find the time taken? Time taken is equal to, in physics, I have been keep on telling me, telling my students to learn the speed and distance speed time by a triangle like this, distance, speed and time. When you want to find something, keep your fingers on top of it, you will get the other one. This is going to be 
d by s let us keep the finger on top of time which is the t here so you will get d by s so distance by speed now time taken is equal to distance is what 300 by what is the speed here we are talking about the usual speed so it's gonna be x that is what your time taken here fine so this was our first case and the next case when speed have increased okay when the speed have increased what is the time taken then it would be as you know that it would be less than the usual time right because you have increased the speed so the time taken would be the same distance by the same there is some one term x plus 5 so plus 5 here i have increased the speed of 20 here as the same case over here i increase the speed 5 so here we got the time in the usual and when you increase you got the time here fine now what is being said here in the question if i follow it is said that 300 by x minus 300 by x plus 5 if you subtract these two times it's gonna be what nothing but your 2 fine yes now this is what the equation what i want and now when you solve this equation you will get the value of x now for solving this one you need to take the lcm and the lcm would be nothing but x x x into x plus 5 so this term will multiply with this x plus 5 and this x will be multiplied with this and thus divided by okay now if you if you okay fine i will write one more step x into x plus 5 is equal to 2 clear now just cross multiply with this thing over here and what you will get you will get 300 and i'm just gonna multiply inside 300 x plus 1500 okay minus 300 x that is equal to this one you multiply with this this you will get 2x and multiplying inside you will get a square then 2x into plus 5 you will get 10x clear so this is what the equation you really want to form it then now simplify it and solve for x now as you move forward you can see that 3 300x and minus 300x this will cancel and thus you will get 1500 is equal to 2x square plus 10x isn't it 5000 my is equal to 202x square plus 10x now taking the 1500 to this side because taking all these terms to this side will give me all negative you will get confused so take this one to the other side which will give me 2x square plus 10x and this will go that side and i will get minus 1500 which is equal to now this side it will be zero clear yeah. so this is how i reached and one more thing what you can get is that whenever you get an equation like this and you have a term 2x square or 2 anything you you can you try to cancel these forms from all the terms here i can cancel 2 from all the term and thus i will get x square plus 5x minus 750 is equal to 0 this is what i ultimately got it and where i need to now start to simplify it to get the value of x clear now solving this one now you better understand those things what i have told you earlier you need to split the middle term so you need to find those two numbers which when plus will get 5 and when you multiply will get minus 750 so i have told you several times just try looking at it you will get it once you are in a group here now to get 5 you can think of like 15 minus 10 15 minus 10 is 5 but 15 into 10 is 150 so but it's a hell lot of a value here this is 750 it's much more so you need to think of much bigger number why not like what we think like 30 and minus 25 when you subtract again 5 but you multiply 35, 30 into 2s, okay, uh, 30 into 25, like 3 into 25, that's 75. So, it's, a, it's the same thing, what you are expecting us over here in this question. So, here I split the middle term as x square, this 5 will be splitting up into 2, 
what is it 30x x okay 30x minus 25x minus 750 is equal to 0 this is what you really want to get it if you want to solve it okay from here I would take the common which is x here so x plus 30 and from these two terms if I look at I really need to take x out minus outside and 25 so, uh, 750 you already know that these two are uh, multiplied together to get 750 so 25 I am taking it outside so thus I will get 30 so 25 I am taking it outside from here 25 went so x minus 25 went so x here minus 25 went so it will be plus 30 that is equal to 0 fine so now whenever I, I, I have some uh, like a question like this where you need to split the, multi the middle term I have been keep on telling you the brackets what you get will be same then only I can write the step as x plus 3 I am taking that common outside and what I will get is that x plus 3 into x minus not 3 30 into x minus 25 is equal to 0 there now that implies x plus 30 is equal to 0 or x minus 25 is equal to 0 from here what I am getting what I will get here is x is equal to minus 30 and from here I will get x is equal to plus 25 now I cannot pick two values I need to take one which one I will take I will take the positive term because speed cannot be negative so this is what my answer for the question so therefore the usual speed is nothing but what 25 kilometer per hour clear this is the answer for my question number 20 fine I think it's more pretty much clear I think so we are, are actually playing with the time here you got to see the first speed here first time here with the usual speed then you get to see the time taken if the speed have increased by 5 you subtract these two and you get to know that that is 2 hour less so when you subtract so that is by equation which I found and then kept on doing it and I solved the equation thus I got two values for x take the positive value because speed would be always positive clear this is the law this is the concept which you need to keep it in your mind just make sure that you do all these th these problems similar problems so that uh, you don't find any difficulty in solving these type of things fine now on to the 23rd or question solve for x 1 when 1 by a plus b plus x is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by x where a is not equal to 0, b is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to minus a plus b. Fine. So you have this thing over here that I need to take and I need to solve. You don't need to much worry about this particular thing, what is given here. Fine. Now solving on to this equation, okay, I will write it again. 1 by a plus b plus x is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by x that is what I have here and from this you need to solve for what x so this is what I have it now now when these type of equations are given to you what I normally used to tell my students is that take the x terms to one side take the constants to the other side and then solve it fine in that case here I have this one is having this term is having an x term this is also having x term right so I will take that one to one side thus I will get what 1 by a plus b plus x and this will come all the way down here this side that will be minus 1 by x is equal to these two are already on to the other side and I didn't I don't need to uh, worry much about it and this is what I get now I need to take the LCM here and thus I will get what I will get x will come all the way down here minus I would have this term up which will be a plus 
b plus x by I have a term here which is x into a plus b plus x isn't it that is equal to if I take the LCM here it will be a b and this side it will be b plus a so that is what I am getting when I am cross multiply or no taking the LCMs now opening up the brackets what I will get here is x and minus need to be multiplied inside so minus a minus b and minus x by x into a plus b plus x is equal to you can multiply inside no problem okay here itself you can multiply that is equal to a plus b I can write no problem and a b clear now x and minus x get cancelled and what you can do here is that you can uh, take a minus outside if you want and keep it like this by you can multiply inside and that will be ax plus bx plus x square and that will be equal to a plus b by a b clear here now if I see both the sides I am getting a plus b a plus b I can cancel these two together a plus b and a plus b and thus I will I need to now cross multiply this one over here and this over here thus I will get minus a b minus a b a b when multiplying with minus 1 there that is equal to now I have 1 here so the complete term comes up without any change ax plus bx plus x square now it's the time to just take it to one side and put it as equal so I'm taking this term all the way down here thus I will get x square I'm writing it at first then I have here ax plus bx here and then this will term will come all the way down here and that will be plus a b a b and this this thing when you see it properly you can get a clear idea about where we are stopping splitting the middle terms those two terms when you multiply will be a b fine those two term numbers we normally used to say like a and b here in this case you can add these two will get x when you multiply these two you will get a b so is the time that you don't need to just common uh, make x common and write it in that term and you can solve it you can simply solve it from here by taking the common from here these two terms that will be x will be common and thus I will get one x pend outside so one is there plus x pend outside so a is left plus b I'm taking it outside so it will be x plus b went outside so it will be a so brackets you can see and 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 that when you when, when you take minus a b to this side this side is going to be equal and this is going to be equal to zero be equal to zero fine thus I can write the brackets together and what is there outside in another bracket and you can say that this is equal to zero from clearly over here you can write x plus a is equal to zero or x plus b is equal to zero so when x plus a is equal to zero what is the value of x here a is gonna be going to the other side and thus get a is equal to minus a and from here what I am getting x is equal to b will go that side and will go to minus b so value of so solving this x what I will get x is equal to minus a or minus b so this is what the value for a x is fine I think it's pretty much clear and it's easy I think. so you can solve it very very quickly and that is for mark question here each for mark I have told you it's very important fine then moving on to the 24th question an AP consists of 50 terms of which third term is 12 third term is 12 and the last term is 106 so you know like AP automatic progression where it's given that how many terms are there there are 50 terms so if I draw a, a basic layout to get you some idea so I have a lot of terms and the last term is over here this is my first term this is my second this is my third as it goes on and on the last one would be your 50th term right 
So that is my 50th term. So I consist consist of 50th term, which the third is 12th. The third, I know, know what is the value of the third term. It's going to be 12. And the last term is what? It's 106. Yes, 106. So have a definite inter a period within like you have 50 terms. You need to know or when you have a certain like in AP, when you have questions like this, you, you have several equations or several formulas inside AP. So the prime thing for you to do AP questions is to know the formulas well and you need to know where to use the, those formulas. As in this question, we, we know like these terms, what are like, I know the third, third term is 12. I know again that the last term is 106 and what is asked to find is somewhere over here 29th term that is what they are asked to find what is it find here so for each finding each term or the finding the nth term we have a formula which everyone knows it i think and if you don't know keep it in your mind a n is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 into d this formula you check it that is very important to find the terms and the term is what and if you want to find in a term you you can use the formula by substituting the values for a1 and d which term you want it you can get it whereas a1 is nothing but what is it the first term and the d is nothing but the difference between the each one of them there is a common difference that is a difference find d so this is the formula where if you want the third term put n as a3 is equal to what 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 but now here a1 in this formula i don't know d even i don't have any idea but i have two terms which is the third one and the 50th term and how can, how can you raise to a value like 29 or how can you find the value of 29th term by using this one okay let's try now you know how to write a3 a3 with the help of this formula it is nothing but the first term which i don't know i'm keeping it as a1 itself plus n minus 1 so n is nothing but over here it is 3 so 3 minus 1 it's gonna be 2d fine here and i know very well what is the value the value is what 12 so i am gonna write this one as what i'm gonna write this one as a1 i don't know plus 2, 2d okay and that is gonna be equal to what a3 is now but it's 12 that is gonna be your equation number one clear so that is your equation number one now the next one this one is done now the about the 50th term a 50 50th term is equal to a1 still the same formula a1 i don't know plus 2 it's not uh, here it is 2 because it is 3 minus 1 here the term is 50 a term so 50 minus 1 is gonna be 49 D with that what I will arise to I will arise to this one which gives me what a1 plus 49 D is equal to its values already given which is 106 so 106 is my second equation so these two equation as per you guys are concerned is very very important because these from these equation you are gonna equate and gonna find what the value of a1 and d which I can use it for finding 29 term that must be the logic so here first of all in this one the logic should be what to find the value of a1 and d then take these two value and substitute in the formula of finding a 90th term find here Yes, a 90th as you know that a 90th is what nothing but a 1 plus n minus 1 into d this is what I am waiting for and I still am waiting for to find the answer for a 1 and d right from these two equations solving this I should need to get the value of a 1 and d how okay dear okay I will solve it over here let's see now adding 1 and 2 okay no if you add it it won't get cancelled right okay now a equation 1 minus equation 2 what you will get 
when you subtract a 1 minus 2 it's going to be a a minus a it's going to be cancelling up and 2 minus 49 so 2d minus 49 uh, d yeah 2d minus 49d is equal to 12 minus 106 clear so i'm gonna equate these to 1 minus 2 so it does i get got something like this fine that gives me what now these two things together it's gonna be 47 to subtract it from 49 and then we need to put the biggest sign of the biggest number which is minus 49 47d that is equal to from here 606 6 went again one more 6 so it's gonna be minus 94 fine which gives me d is gonna be minus 94 by minus 47 what is 47 into 2 yes one time it's gonna be 2 and minus and minus get cancelled so what is the value of d d is nothing but d is equal to 2 clear from this d you can easily find what is the value of a1 so a1 is nothing but okay a1 is equal to 12 minus 2d right so a1 is gonna be 12 minus 2d is what nothing but 4 which is equal to 8 so a1 is 8 here clear so i got the value which i wanted which is a1 i got right now and d also i got it fine now what else is there now if you find a and d a1 i will write it over here what is the value of a1 a1 i got it as 8 and what is the value of um, d d is equal to 2 fine so these two are there with me right now what i am supposed to find i am finding 29 term as i wrote here a29 as the formula goes like a1 plus n minus 1 into d which gives me a1 is now 8 that is the first term so if i see this one i have already found the first term which is gonna be 8 okay 8 8 plus n minus 1 29 minus 1 is 28 28 into what is the value of d d is nothing but 2 so what i'm getting from here 8 plus when you when you multiply 2 into 8 is 16 1 2 into 2 is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 so 8 8 56 plus 8 56 4 plus is 60 60 plus 4 is 64 so the value of your so the ninth term so the ninth so 29th term is nothing but it is 64 here so this is the answer for the question number 29 so this is how you solve it 25th question Prove that in a right angled triangle, square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. So it's a proof here, which is given in the textbook. And uh, I can tell you that, okay, go and learn from the textbook. But I just want you, want you to listen. If you like, sometimes like some students cannot understand what is given in the textbook. So that that's why they go for other resources. So I just... Um, would want to prove it over here hmm? prove the same thing hypotenuse it's very easy to like i will tell you have certain things which you need to keep in your mind when you do it okay then it is pretty much easy i'm gonna make a right angle triangle some someone can make a right triangle like this so make sure like you draw somewhat like this so that you get a idea like what you are proving so i made a right triangle like this I'm gonna mark it as uh, A, B, and C here. Fine. So I have a right triangle, right angled triangle. So this is right angled over here. It's a 90 degree. Now, how to prove is that I need to make a perpendicular over here. I'm gonna make perpendicular to this one. So obviously, you know that this is also gonna be 90. If this is 90, this angle is also gonna be 90. Right, and which I'm just marking it as D. Clear. Yeah. So I hope this diagram is clear. So 
uh, there are there if you look at there is a uh, three triangles over here dear there are three triangles over here one is a b c the other triangle is a b d and the third triangle is you can say okay b d c okay this is another this is a triangle this is a triangle and the complete thing is a triangle so you have three triangles here clear now what we are supposed to prove it is like pythagoras theorem like what is it this is from the from the from the picture itself it's very much clear that in this triangle which is the biggest one ac so you are supposed to prove here ac square is equal to hmm, hypotenuse so this is my biggest side which is my hypotenuse so ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square this is what i am supposed to prove this is to prove fine this is to prove ac square is equal to ab plus bc square clear yeah. so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna take two triangles at a time and i'm gonna make and, and as you know that these three triangles like when you split the big triangle into two this one of the small ones and the bigger one is gonna be similar so Okay, what is going to be similar? Let's try. Like triangle ABC is similar to triangle ABD. Okay, or ADB. Okay, this triangle. As you have studied in theorem like I think like 7.6. These two are triangles are going to be similar. If it case, like if it is similar, now what I'm going to do here is that Okay, I'm gonna draw the triangle there. This is one triangle. Okay, it's okay. This one. Okay, I just made a bit, little bit awkward shape. Okay, but still it will work. Okay, this is one triangle, which is this one there. Okay, and then the bigger one, bigger one is like this, right? Bigger one is like this. Which I'm, what I'm gonna do here is that when I rotate this one, can I form or with the center, the triangle looks somewhat like this, isn't it? Okay, leave that portion. Fine. The triangle looks somewhat like this, where the B is here, and this have turned a bit that has gone up, which is C. Then this portion is here, like A. Why I draw something like this is to make the students understand that. Uh, similar triangles are like uh, seen like this or you need to imagine like this because i have seen a lot of students have a confusion regarding the how to or which side would be similar to the other side so that is the confusion part what they they uh, they have told me till now so according to this one i don't think there was much of a confusion here as you know that this angle is equal to or this angle is similar to this angle this angle is equal to this angle so because if it's similar now now whenever you have such a theorem to be proved i want this side and this side so you need to be very peculiar about like uh, how you take these ones or how you uh, deal with the ratios now i'm gonna write as a one ratio okay now ad ad is here yes and ad is equal or ad by ab okay of this triangle right okay what i'm gonna write here is can i write ad by ab ad by ab this and this ratio okay when it when they are similar triangles Okay, you can write like this now ad ad by ab is equal to the other ratio where i'm not getting this bd part k okay. i'm not gonna take this part i want ab because ab is what i have there to prove so i'll take that one ab's thing so ab within the smaller one ab by when you compare this side is relatively similar or this triangle or this side is similar to this side so ab by ac fine dear this is what you need to bring up dear and you need to know how to how you did this one 
okay make sure that you know this one and keep it well now from here what I'm getting is that okay AD into AC right this into this and this into this that is how you go AD into AC is equal to AB two times so can't I write AB square yes so this is what my equation number one clear now now the second triangle there now the second triangle now I'm gonna take this triangle okay I'm gonna take one triangle is almost fixed that is our big triangle that I'm gonna make it again this big one which it is I have rotated with respect to the C point C and I got something like this where this is 90 that is a big triangle I just rotated a bit and put it like this and I'm gonna take this triangle okay fine I'm, I'm gonna take this triangle where this is 90 and I'm gonna rotate this one like this so thus I will get somewhat like this right where this is an angle and this have this triangle this triangle have rotated a bit like this so B here D here and C fine I think like you are clear with what I have done right fine when these two triangles are similar so here what is it triangle ABC is similar to triangle BDC and as you know that these two triangles are similar so these sides what I have marked and all these things are gonna be the the ratios are gonna be same now which ratio what you need to pick okay I'm gonna take this side which is D, uh, CD CD by BC because from here I almost got BD now it's a time that AB I got it from this one now it's a time for me to get BC here okay think like that think a bit logically so here I want AB it's done BC is what I'm looking for so I compared BD BC right BC with what this particular side so BC that is equal to again a square is there so this is how the trick what you need to apply in your brain how to bring it don't just buy heart it you just want an aside you want that AB that I got it from the first when you compare these two triangles when you compare the next one I should need to tell which term BC so BC is there in this equation yes now BC need to come up so I have it have it on this one so BC by what should we be need to compare with AC so compare that one with AC fine now cross multiply these two what I'm gonna get CD into AC is equal to BC square yes this is what I really wanted that is gonna be equation number two fine dear is it is it clear so I got equation number one I got equation number two now it's the time for me to add these two because on to the right side I have really have the same things what is over here so adding adding one and two okay adding one and two what you are getting here ad right hand right and left hand side left hand side and right hand side right hand side there ac is gonna be added with a uh, cd plus ac that is equal to what you're getting here ab square plus bc square clear b square plus bc square there now which implies now from here ac is common so i can take a b ac into ad plus cb is that it what is common ac is common in both these terms so i have i took that one outside what is left is ad and what is here left is cd so i wrote it in the inside the bracket and that is equal to ab square plus bc square think it's not too confusing yeah it's pretty much easy I think so that is equal to now what is AD plus CD is gonna be the complete AC right so this thing I can write it as AC into AC is equal to AB square plus BC square fine 
and that which can gives you what ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square this is what you are supposed to prove and this is ultimately we got here and thus hence proved find here this is how you prove your Pythagoras theorem so what you did you split you took the 90 okay you draw the diagram with a 90 degree right triangle so right triangle is obviously 90 so then divide it to half those three triangles and uh, you, are you took the first small triangle compared with the big one and got a ratio and from there you got you need to write in terms of a b square is equal to what okay you need to compare it that way and the next triangle is what you compare you need to write in that term where you will get bc square so i got bc square then add these two you will end up proving this pythagoras theorem here where it would be nothing but the hypotenuse square is nothing but equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides other this side and this side square is equal to ac square and hence proved moving on to the 27th question 26 is a construction like uh, which i have done it uh, uh, in, a, in a separate video so uh, if you want you can go on to the description and in 27th it's uh, it's a question like which i really enjoy to do it and which a lot of people feel like yeah how confusing it is what to do like basically i have find uh, uh, so many things which is very similar to a lot of different questions it is just to understand the question but this one is not so hard but uh, there is if certain things which you need to uh, know which you need to understand in this question okay let's go through the question 27th a man on the top of a vertical vertical observation a tower observes a car moving at a uniform speed coming directly towards it if it takes 12 minutes for the angle of depreciation to change from 30 to 45, how long will the car takes to reach the observer, observer observation tower from this point? How long? Okay. Now, what is the question is that I will just draw the diagram and just read it again for your better understanding there. So this is actually your tower okay this is your tower fine here now the man is at the top of a vertical tower so the man is over here he's over here i don't want to draw because i just don't want to waste too much time otherwise i would have drawn all this okay fine okay a small man is standing over there in the tower fine this is a tower now he is observing that there is a car which is moving uniformly and coming directly towards him so this is that floor fine here he sees that a, a car is moving from this so there is a car which is actually moving okay moving towards the tower fine here so it's moving towards the tower fine then and uh, coming towards the tower if it takes 12 hour for the angle of depreciation now to think a bit here what is angle of depreciation that you need to know it so angle of depreciation is nothing but this particular angle was 30 before that mean to say that now itself you can draw and keep it 30 yeah is it it 30 and it have now changed to it have now changed to 30 to 45 so as it comes all the way down here so when the car is right now here sometimes now the angle of depreciation is this now it have changed to it's been told that it have changed from 30 to 45 so what is 45 here this is 45 so so angle 30 it was small now it's much more bigger so it has actually like the diagram is like this so 40 and it's been asked to find how long will the car takes to reach the observer so reach this point so how long it will take from this point so from this point how long it will take so the time taken is what is asked time taken is what is asked but 
and also something else is given here regarding the 12 minutes so it took around 12 minutes to reach here isn't it from here to here in 12 minutes now how to solve the problem so basically we don't want these time and all those steps because i do want to find the distance between i don't want to know the stubber maybe like i will just mark it this as h because the height of the tower i'm just keeping it as h and which i need to before i just write anything i just want to mark it and okay let this one be a this be b this be c and this be d no no shows okay we can take it any any order then what else i marked is at h and here now if i mark this distance as now time is given so time into speed is what your distance is so i'm gonna write 12 and i will write my first step that let the speed of the car b x what is the unit here it is in uh, minutes given so i will mark it as x um meter meter per minutes okay because the minutes seconds it goes with meter to minutes also keep it with meter and uh, ultimately minute meters is meter kilometer all these things are not we want we want the time how long so we want ultimately the time right fine then what then we kept the 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 height of the tower b h just marked it as h and this one as x meter minutes per meter then this as h and also if you want you can mark this distance as y okay which plays a very important role okay this distance because this is actually the distance what we really want in order to calculate for the time taken for the car to travel from here to here that is what it's asked so from here to here is very relatively very important from here to here is very important stuff here fine now if you want you can write it as you know, like um let the the distance from the last point to the to the observer b y okay if you want to mark it mark it all these left like that now for some important relatively important things over here dear whenever i have a, a question like given you understand it draw the diagram then it is very easy very very easy here already you know that there are two triangles one this thing there are more triangles but the right triangle one and then you have two here now i'm gonna take the first triangle here in triangle which one a b and c what is tan 45 and normally in these type of question we take stan or tan or tan or mostly tan we used to take it here or sometimes sine okay and it's not like cos won't come but mostly tan is the one so make sure that you learn all the values of tan 30 tan 30 is 1 by root 3 tan 45 is 1 tan 60 is root 3 so those values keep keep it and that will be very handy for you okay so tan 45 from this triangle tan 45 is nothing but it's opposite by hypotenuse you know opposite by base right so h by y hmm? h by y isn't it from here what i can write as tan tan 45 is 1 so y is equal to h isn't it equation number one so isn't it tan 45 is one so y will go there and this becomes y alone because one into y is y is equal to h but that is done now now uh, next triangle this one this triangle the big triangle in triangle which one a b and d in this triangle a b d again we 
I'm gonna take tan 30 this time because this angle here is 30 so 30 is gonna be h by this time it is something different which will have a, a bit more length here side which is y plus 12x fine root tan 30 is nothing but I have told you 1 by root 3 is equal to h by y plus 12x isn't it here yeah. from here I need to equate to h from here you know that h is equal to y or y is equal to h you know it now um, here h is equal to okay and I can I can even write it like h is equal to y okay h is what we wanted here from here to h but before that the root 3 will go up that will give me root 3 h is equal to y plus 12 x and that way h is equal to which implies h is equal to y by when y plus 12 x by root 3 isn't that clear that is gonna be equation number one right two fine so this is what you really wanted so this is one triangle this is another triangle where you can keep it uh, okay I would rather write it like h is equal to y okay which is my equation number one not this one okay h is equal to y now when you compare one and two can can't you write from one and two both sides h are same so y is equal to y plus 12 x by root 3 isn't it can't I write like this yes now I want to find this y this particular y I need to find fine now root this y by meters or whatever it is okay at the beginning now root 3 can be cross multiplied which I will get 3y y this one will cross multiply then y I can take it to the other side y is equal to 12x which implies now from here y is what common as y and y from these two terms so I can take y outside and what I will get is root 3 minus 1 is equal to 12x clear and from here what I am getting I am getting y is equal to 12x by root 3 minus 1 which I am gonna rationalize it by root 3 plus 1 by root 3 plus 1 what I am gonna get here is now when you okay I will write it down that is equal to y is equal to y is equal to this one will be 12 root 3 plus 1 into x by this will be a root this one you can imagine a plus a minus b into a plus b a minus b into a plus b is nothing but a square minus b square so root 3 square minus 1 square so root 3 square is 3 3 minus 1 is gonna be 2 fine that in a way could be cancelled with this and you will get what 6 root 3 plus 1 x fine so here we are getting the value of y here so y is equal to 6 root 3 plus 1 into x now from here what is my question what is what is asked to find how long this is your distance this is your your uh, speed okay this is your speed which you know it this is your speed which was in a uniform speed so it will be the time so the therefore time taken to take taken to reach the observation tower is nothing but what 6 into root 3 plus 1 minutes yeah 
understood this is what your answer is so this is how I solve this question so you need to take uh, the diagram should be proper otherwise you are not gonna get the answer so and once you get it then arrange appropriately then compare the ratios trigonometric ratios tan 45 and tan 30 you get to see that I got h is equal to in both this both this I just compared these two and from that equation and from where I get to write what is y is equal to from there I can clearly get this value what I'm getting here 6 into root 3 plus 1 is gonna be the time taken for the car from here to reach the tower got it that was 27 okay moving on to the 27th or question the angle of elevation of a cloud from a point 60 meter above the surface of water of a lake so you have a lake here yeah so you have a lake yeah and of is 30 and the angle of depreciation of the shadow from the same point in water of the lake is 60 find the height of the cloud from the surface of the water but okay once more now this is an or question dear if you cannot figure out the other question which we have done just do this one and I don't think it's so hard just the logic here also uh, it's not very hard here. it's very very easy for you to understand the angle of elevation so already whenever you get to see like angle of elevation it is from down to up think like that that is an angle when it is depreciation you are at the top and you are looking down so that is depreciation depreciation this is angle of elevation so e and d that you need to clear that concept need to be very much clear to do this problem angle of elevation we are looking up and looking up that is elevation of a cloud so here is a cloud here is a cloud here so i'm looking at it but what is the problem here uh, from a point 60 above so i am at a point 60 above so this is 60 meters above and I'm standing over here and above the surface of the water of a lake is 30 so from there the angle of elevation what I'm looking at is that is that is what 30 okay that angle of elevation is 30 as far as the question is concerned that is 12 to 30 and the angle of depreciation and when you look at down depreciation it's shadow from the same point in water and the same point so it's shadow here somewhere here so this distance this distance what I have it from the cloud to from to the water to the water of that particular lake okay will be as same as what will be the reflection so the length would be same this and this would be same okay and depreciation of the same point in the water so that point angle of depreciation so that one that angle of depreciation would be 60 this is 60 then the 60 find the height of the cloud find the height of the cloud fine now this is what the need to understand and find it height from the surface of the water may be clear with the question here it is asked to find the height from the of the cloud from the surface of the water from the surface but I know that this is 60 meters isn't it this is 60 so I am taking this one as H this I'm uh, marking it as H so that is H and this is gonna be 60 so that same height will be the height over here that will be what okay 60 plus H or H plus 60 would be this height from here to here isn't it clear so H plus 60 or 60 plus H would be this height because that is a deflection this entire height and the person is looking from here okay so these are the two triangles what I have if I want to mark it I can mark it like A okay this is gonna be B if you mark this one as C okay D if you want to mark it D and E if you want 
right so these are the points now um, okay fine moving on so that will be pretty much clear once the diagram is done now it's the time for you to how to manage to get the values and before that also you need to know what is let and all those stuff so you are actually um, first you need to okay figure out let okay let the solution okay let the height of the cloud cloud from a point sixteen meter at the height of the cloud from a point sixty meter above the above the surface of water B H so we are make marking it as H meters fine so this one is marked as watch H but the answer we need to write the entire height that means you need to find this height and along with that you need to add the 60 then would be your final answer right there so in this question we are we are gonna oh you understood it um, I think clearly so one person is is standing on a 50 meter a point 50, 60 meter above the water level and he is looking at the cloud and that angle of elevation is 30 but he is standing at the top right but that particular height is h so whereas the entire height is from the water surface is h plus 60 which is going to be the height of the reflection so here is the reflection so we can again see the cloud over here that there is the same cloud which is over here so that is a reflection and when i join i get this particular diagram find you now and this side and the this one i'm just marking it as x fine now let's see in this triangle in triangle a b c in this triangle a b c i'm gonna compare this triangle as well as this triangle let's see in that triangle tan because i opposite and okay tan 30 is equal to which is h h by because okay if i draw the triangle that will be like this this is the triangle a b and c this is your 30 and this one is your h and this is your x so from this triangle tan 30 is equal to h opposite by adjust right opposite by base so that would be 1 by adjacent opposite by adjacent like tan 30 is nothing but 1 by root 3 that is equal to h by x so I can write h is equal to okay okay I will write in terms of x okay x is equal to root 3 h you cross multiply this over here so you will get h is equal to root root 3 h x is equal to root 3 h fine so leave it there with this triangle now the next one this triangle is gonna be uh, this and this yeah this and this we shall mark it as B and this is gonna be C again this is gonna be E that is a triangle what we have here find you that particular triangle this was the earlier one which we solved and kept it over here with x is equal to root 3h that we already we have finished now the next triangle is over here bce for your better understanding i just marked that which is gonna be your 60 degree dear so in that way in triangle in triangle this triangle bce in this triangle 
tan 60 is equal to what tan 60 is equal to opposite by adjacent which is going to be the entire height so this height is nothing but 60 plus h plus another 60 isn't it so 60 plus h plus 60 that is going to be h plus 120 is the height so this is going to be opposite side is going to be okay i will write it like this 60 plus h was the earlier height plus the next height which is going to be again 60 by because this entire height is what you are looking at from here to here okay this entire height already this is 60 plus h plus another 60 by your adjacent side which is going to be at x and from here you already know that root 60 is nothing but root 3 and x will come up that gives me h plus 120 clear 60 plus 60 is going to be h plus 220 yes clear so here i am just dropping by now i just want to find what the value of h so h i can write it as h is equal to <laughs> root 3x and 120 will go that side will be minus 120 isn't it clear yep then that gives me h is equal to root 3 is there now it's a time for substitution here you need to substitute over here x is gonna be root 3h minus 120 which implies I would get h is equal to root 3 into root 3 is 3h is equal to 3h minus 120. So taking the 3 to 3h to this side, h minus 3h is equal to minus 120, where h minus this one be 2h is equal to minus 120. So from here I would get h is equal to minus 120 by minus 2 which is going to be h is equal to nothing but it is 60 60 what okay and it's not okay 60 units fine okay clear fine yeah. okay i'm just marking it as height is 60 60 meters because here it is meters fine so it is 60 meters is my height h here so what is supposed to find here so therefore hmm? therefore the height height of the cloud from the surface of water this it's actually not this one okay this is not the actual height water is how much it's gonna be from here till here that is the entire height so h already we got it that is h plus 60 isn't it h plus 60 that is gonna be h is what 60 60 plus 60 that is equal to 120 meters is my answer for the question number 27 our question okay fine so this is how you solve the question here so i hope you understood the question understand the diagram how understand where it is and how this comes so whenever you get to see some water reflection you get to see you need to take the height entire height and that entire height will be your reflection so that means this is one 120 if i and if i got an answer 120 here that means this height will be also what 120 meters dear from the water level fine that is how the concept should be so even if you if, if you see 60 plus h it's gonna be what same 120 so this would be as same as this so that is the only concept which you need to keep it in your mind when you solve these type of questions fine 28 the median of the following data is 525 find the value of x and y so we are supposed to find what the value of x and y if the total frequency is 100 so if the total frequency have given what you are supposed to find here you are supposed to find x and y fine when the median is also given here now here in this chapter you know that there are certain formulas which you need to learn it more median 
all these formulas you need to learn it when it is asked you need to apply this formula and before that just finish up our table as you have seen here there is a class interval frequency and cumulative frequency I have drawn here and the class is given as per the question 0 to 100 100 to so I know a certain thing from the table itself at first what is H H is the interval right and we have certain frequencies where this frequency I don't know and as well as I am supposed to find the value of this X as well as this Y just the values are given so I'm supposed to find the value of X and Y according to the question fine now first what we do is that we will find the cumulative frequency now the first one we don't have it when you add okay you can put like two cumulative is adding up, piling up so 2 and 5 gives me 7 and 7 plus x I'm gonna get 7 plus x here okay when I add this one with x again the 7 with this 12 I will get 19 plus x isn't it then that term added with this how much I will get it's gonna be like a like another 10 plus will be 20 29 29 plus so it's gonna be 36 36 plus x then this 36 plus x will be going and giving me a value uh, 56 plus x okay dear and this one added with y will give me 56 plus x plus y fine then that one added with this 9 will get me 65 65 plus x plus y and that plus 7 will give me 72 plus x plus y fine and then the next one when you add it up it's gonna be x plus y fine this is what I'm gonna get at when you add up all the this is what I'm gonna get when I add up all those cumulative frequency fine and it's been told that the total frequency is 100 that means that when you total up all the frequency it is gonna be 100 that means over here also when you add up all these things it's gonna be same 100 that means I can write an equation from here that 76 x plus y is nothing but it's equal to 100 fine from here what i can write is x plus y is equal to 100 minus 76 which gives me x plus y is equal to 70 minus will be 30 30 30 on 6 more minus when you subtract it it's gonna be 24 so this is one equation what I'm gonna keep it now need to understand a certain thing over here before I get into the formulas here you need to know which is the median class the data which is given us 525 so here 525 is in which range at this particular range isn't it you can see here 5 this particular thing this one with all the way down here so this is the stuff which I am looking forward for right now this one okay now first let me write the formula how to find the median median is nothing but L plus N by 2 minus CF by okay N by 2 minus CF by F into H this is what I want to calculate let me see what is L L is nothing but the lowest limit of that particular median class so 
I will write the values here. L is equal to 500. Fine. And then uh, N, N is nothing but it is given in the question. It is 100. Okay. That is the that is a total frequency. That is your N. This is your N. This is your L. Fine. And now CF. CF is nothing but before the median class, the cumulative frequency, what you get, that is your CF. So CF is 36 plus X is your CF here. Fine. And your frequency F. F is nothing but the frequency at that particular median class is your F. 20. And H, obviously, you know, the class interval here is 100. Fine. So this is what I have it at the, at the end of the day to apply these values inside this particular formula. Fine. If I apply median, as you know that the value is given, which is 525, that is already given, that is equal to L is 500 right ls 500 here then plus n by 2 n by 2 is 100 by 2 which is gonna be 50 minus cfs 36 plus x right okay by your 20 which is your f 20 into your h which is 100 here got it got a clear idea i hope so you have the formula, you have all these values, just keep on substituting it, you'll get to the answer here, which implies 525 plus, no, equal to 500 plus, this one would be, uh, okay, I'm gonna just subtract this one straight away, 50 minus 35, 30 out is 20, 20 again will be 14. So 14 plus, no, minus x because you are going to multiply inside by 20 into 100. So this 20 and this 100 could be cancelled. And uh, how many times? 5 times. Now when you multiply inside, it's going to be 525 is equal to 500 plus 5, 7, uh, 5 into 14, like it's going to be like a 20, 0, 2, 5, 70. 70 minus 5x. Clear? Now I'm supposed to find the value of x from here. So when you add this thing, it's going to be 525. This whole thing, it's going to be here. When added up, it's going to be 7 minus 5, 70 equal to minus 5x clear yeah. so from here i can what i can write minus 5x is equal to this one what i will get is minus 45 clear yeah. which implies x is nothing but what is the value of x is 9 when you divide 5 on both the sides you will get 9 and this minus and minus get cancelled, 5 cancel from here, here you will get 9, so x will be 9. So I got the value x from here. So x is nothing but y 9 here. Already have an equation 1, so that I am taking it and I am going to substitute that. So x plus y is 24. Now what is the value of y? Value of y is 24 minus 9. So when you subtract y is gonna be 15 so you got the value of x and y so this is what we are asked to find what is value of x is 9 value of y is nothing but 15 so this is what we are getting this we are supposed to find from this question that is what asked to find find clear so this is the answer for the question number 28 this is the second question of uh, 28 or 
The following data indicates the marks of 53 students in max. Now this is what being given that complete table which I have plotted like this and I have made two extra column which is one as less than mark and the one as cumulative frequency. Fine. Now why I made these two columns to just plot the points because as you have told to draw less than type O give for the data above and hence give find the median. So median is what you need to find ultimately um, and it's been given that it's a case of like 53 students find here. So how to go with the question is here you can see the marks like 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and why this less than mark is that because uh, the 10 which is on the first class is not taken in that class that is taken in the next class. Okay, that's why less than mark is uh, what we wanted. That's why I made a column like that. So less than the marks would be less than 10 means the mark would be out of like 0 to 9, not 10. 10 would come in the next class, which is underneath that. Fine. So now what you are supposed to write here is you are supposed to write less than marks. So you can you can write here less than less than 10 less than 10 less than 20 less than 30 less than 40 less than 50 less than 60 less than 70 less than 80 less than 90 and less than yeah, 100 fine I just wrote these values these values are gonna be so important to plot the graph fine so that's why I just made this entire column because what will go with what that I will tell you how to write these now with the cumulative frequency as you know that cumulative is sum of the next frequency right it will be piling up so the first one is just 5 if you know you can write it or else it would be like this 5 plus the next one 5 plus 3 which is gonna be 8 okay and the next one is gonna be like 8 plus 4 it's gonna be 12 12 plus 3 the next frequency is gonna be 15 15 plus the next one is gonna be 18 18 plus 4 is gonna be 22 fine 22 plus 7 is gonna be 29 29 plus 9 is gonna be how much 38 38 plus 7 is gonna be is gonna be 45 45 plus 8 is gonna be 53 so you are getting the end 53 right here this is where you need to reach and it's been told that it's total up to 53 when you add all these things that means summation of your frequency that is also gonna be 53 if you check these two values are gonna be same these two must be same fine when you when you go on doing your cumulative frequency fine once you have these things now it's the time to make the plotting points now plotting points how to write the plotting points that is pretty much important and which you need to know how you plot 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 the graph but first of all you need to know what is plotting points that is why we wrote this 10 20 30 and all here and this 10 will go with 5 so the plotting points will be 10 and 5 20 and 8 20 and 8 then 40 and no 30 and 12 30 and 12 fine then 40 and 15 40 and 15 then 50 and 18 50 and 18 60 and 60 and 22 60 and 22 
then 70 with 29, 70 and 29, 80 with 38, 80 with 38, then what else is left now? 90 with 45, 90, 45 and 100 with 53 so this is how what my plotting points are once you get to see the your plotting points there once you know it now it's just a time to just find the median with the help of the graph so you need to now draw the graph fine okay let me let me draw it for you As I have plotted the graph uh, approximately, now this I don't have a graph paper, so I'll, uh, approximately I plotted the graph. Just need to understand the logic and you can do by yourself. Fine. Now you have onto your y axis your cumulative frequency, these values that is, you have these values, okay, onto the y axis, this, these values. And the other values you need to put it in your in the x-axis fine now 5 10 in 5 so cumulative frequency is 5 that is 5 in 10 somewhere here fine somewhere here then 20 you have 8 that will be somewhere nearly somewhat over here okay and 30 12 like this then 40 you have in 15 so it will be somewhere over here 15 okay then 50 18 so it will be somewhere over here I think yeah 18 then 60 it will be 22 so somewhere very near to just somewhere over here yeah, 22 then 70, 29, so it will be almost over here. Twenty-nine. Then then you have uh, 80, 80, 38. So 38 would be somewhere over here. That is 30, 38. Then you have 45, uh, which is in 90. 90 you have 45 which is somewhere over here 45 okay somewhere over here then you have 100 which is somewhere over here which is 53 so 53 right so it will be somewhere over here fine so these are the points what we have here these are the what the points what we have so make sure that you draw this one in a graph and check and this is going to be very easy once you have the plotting points then what you need to do is that you just need to go ahead and freehandly draw this particular and join these points fine this is what i have got from the graph once you get this thing you need to know where to look for that value which will give me a median median obviously you will find it somewhere over here you will find or you will get to see that median you get it from here fine but how to as you know that summation of f is 53 as we already got it from here 53 so this is in fact it is n n is equal to 53 and here we have only one one graph to plot that's why we will take the half of it like we will take summation half or n half okay or n half you will take which is 53 by 2 which is gonna be uh, half of this one is 26.5 is what I am getting so make sure that once you get that particular value you come back to the cumulative frequency and over there mark this point somewhere here 26 okay 
and you you just check it what you get with when you connect it to the graph and once you finish it finish off with connecting from the from that line which is parallel to your x axis you get to see you need to draw it below it and it will be somewhere near to 65 so your median so median is what you need to find so the median from this graph is nothing but nearly 65 you can take this is what my median is or somewhere between 64 and 65 so that is my median so this is how you do it with the help of a graph fine so what i did when i had got the question if it is given or if it is asked to make less than then you need to write the less than less than 10 less than 20 like that way you need to do it because it is less than that higher that upper 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 limit it is less than that so i took that because if i wanted that one to plot it plot the points then i made the cumulative frequency and i added with all the the i was keep on adding with the frequencies and at the end i need to reach that place where i will get 53 because it is all about 53 students so that is my summation of my all my frequency and divided by 2 would be that frequency what you are looking forward where you will get the median so that you are you are finding it from the x axis and draw it to the graph and then plot it onto the x axis this is your x axis, axis and that is your y axis so from the x axis you will get your median this is how you do your 20th question fine so i hope you understand the concept do it by yourself Hmm? You uh, you check it in a graph paper. You surely get it. It's so easy, dear. Fine. Okay. This is what your 28th question is. Moving on to the 29th question. The radii of a circular end of a bucket of height 24 centimeter are 15 centimeter and 5 centimeter. Find the area of its curved surface. So curved surface. Now, over here, you know how the bucket is, isn't it? Isn't it like this, somewhat like this? This. And then you have... Uh, almost like this, and then you have... Another circle like this, isn't it? so isn't this this shape looks very familiar to you so in your board exam dear you can expect a question from first term so it is very very important the shape they would say bucket or you they would say something else but it's mostly you will get a question from first term so here you can say that the bucket is in the shape of a festum of height what is the height here 24 centimeter so height is given which is 24 centimeter what is the height this one is the height which is nothing but that's 24 centimeter fine so that is the height then r1 r1 is what radius of the upper end which is equal to the first one which is 15 which is bigger which is 15 so what is 15 so this length is what 15 okay clear and then the smaller one is 5 okay this much you need to be very clear about what you are writing okay once you are done with it so the radius is of the upper circle is 15 r2 is nothing but the radius of the lower end of the bucket 
which is 5 centimeter so you got 5 15 you know what it is and 24 so we got height and then the radius now it's the time for you to know what is the formula for finding the curved surface area so curved surface areas formula what is the formula dear you need to know what is the formula so formula for curved surface area of a first term is nothing but pi into r1 plus r2 into l this is the formula for finding what curved surface area which is csa curved surface area now pi yes you know the value r1 you know it's given r2 is given yes now l what does l that you need to know what is l l is nothing but the slant height this is your l is it given in the question no it's not so if it's not given you need to one way or the other you need to find it here but in this one i am not okay i'm taking okay what make make sure that you see watch my video which i'm gonna make here after after this video that is about all about uh, measurements of different sizes it's about total surface area curved surface area and it's not like you buy heart it i don't want you to buy heart any of these formulas i i tend to see like over three these years once they know the formula students are so happy to do these type of problems but if they are confused with the formula they don't want to do it so and they don't they don't get even the first step what to be written or they just write like what is even the question that's then they will tell that okay i don't know how to solve the question so that is what i was been hearing so long so i will be making a video of it make sure that you watch that one because that is pretty much important for you in rest of your life is that you you don't buy heart anything you just don't learn it by simply just um, watching like simply like by hearting and getting into your mind no just see the concept and that's pretty much easy fine so let's deal with this question first of all so i have this landing height which i need to find and here L, you have a formula for finding L. L is nothing but nothing but I will write the formula and then explain you by h square h square plus r1 minus r2 the whole square. Got it. So L is nothing but a root of h square plus r1 plus r2 the whole square and how you get this one that is pretty much important if this one is clear okay i what i will do is that okay, i will just mark dotted lines if i draw a a triangle from here like this if i mark a triangle like this and i'm taking the triangle all the way down here okay yes this triangle here this is 90 as you know that this is going to be 90 fine keep it like that this is your l this is l and what is this height this height is your h isn't it this is your h we already marked it it is 24 but this is h h is equal to 24 fine then what is this radius what is this one r1 is the entire from here to here it is r1 yes from here to here it is r2 so what would be this distance this one would be r1 minus r2 and now just go through the pythagoras theorem hypotenuse square that when that side becomes a root of h square plus other two sides square of clear yeah. yes this is how you memorize you don't memorize it you just keep keep you just you just keep the logic fine yes once you have this formula and i told you you don't need to buy hard you can or you will get it from the question it's there. you can figure it out what would be there then if you have this formula with you then you can easily find what is the value of l because ultimately you want it over here because i'm just waiting for just the l so once i have it i can find the csa very quickly fine so here h as you know that h is what 24 square this is 24 square plus 
your r square is nothing but uh, it's gonna be okay i'll write it 15 minus 5 the whole square clear that is gonna be root of 24 i have no idea but i need to if you are a student i don't think you will be knowing that 24 table bear but if you are i know it but it's gonna be like a uh, 674 or something like that 676 I think. Uh, but better do it if you have any confusion there 6 6 are like 16 then those are 9 you have 8 here then you have 4 so it's gonna be like um no 5 something 6 then 9 7 1 you have 5 5 76 sorry that's not 6 5 76 then that is over here 570 okay let me write it 576 plus this one is gonna be okay anyway i know that it is gonna be 100 so in that case it will be a root of 676 is that clear so l is nothing but 676 but root i don't want it but fine it is very near to right okay let me try what is the root of and seriously trust me i don't take the all the big method to find out roots and all those stuff i simply do try, like trio method i do try derive method something like this i know that the last part is six so better like now six six okay you know it also like it's gonna be 56 it's nearby so let me try with like uh 26 then 26 into 26 six six are 36 then six are 12 30, 12 5 then six one then five it's gonna be six seven yes i got it so it's gonna be 26 so 26 centimeters is what i have it over here yeah this is something which will go all the way down here in the csi formula so csa formula with this formula what you will get csa is nothing but 22 by 7 which is csi formula pi into r r1 is nothing but R1 plus R2 is okay, I'll write it. 15 plus 10 plus R2 is 5 K okay, into your L which is 26 which I can write 22 by 7 into this is gonna be like 20 and gonna be multiplied with 26 and uh, what is that which i'm building ultimately dear okay let me check here i'll do it i don't want to simply write here uh, like taking that one from somewhere and putting the values here and i don't want to finish off in that fashion i just want you to if i have been keep on telling if you were in my place or i were i was at but your place then how i would have done the same thing i'm gonna multiply this 26 into 22 dear that is quite a bit easy 26 into 22 like 12 is it right? 12 then two are four five then again the same thing over here so it will be something like this where two seven five yes i have this one now it's the time for me to multiply with a two because you multiply these two now with the two how what i will get it's gonna be four seven are seven twos are fourteen fours are like ones are gonna be ten eleven so this one and along with one zero that is how I get here 1141 one, four, one. Four, four. One, one, four, four, by 7 yes this is where I have reached and you can if you want and if you cannot move forward you can just write it like this or if you want really want to go and find what is the exact value of this one you can divide this one here okay I will be dividing the way. 11440 and divided by 7 1 time 7 uh, 4 yeah subtracted 4 bring the 4 here 4 4 5 zar. 4 5 zar. 35 4 6 zar. Uh, 5 6 5 7 5 zar. 35 7 6 zar. 42 6 zar. 42 you subtract this one gonna be 2 again 4 24 so 21 you know 3 is a 21 you subtract this one to get to 3 next 0 course comes here down and it's gonna be 3 5 is 35 so it will be less than that so it will be 4 28 
and subtract so you will get 20 and decimal then 0 yeah? 0 again and something which you will get as, um, as something okay two more decimals we will find so it's gonna be like um, 2 I know that it's gonna be 14 then you have a 6 here then again 0 like how to get this one 16 63 I know it's gonna be uh, 8 there 8 right so you know that you can increment this one and you can get the answer like 1634.3 centimeter square because you are finding the area find here you are finding the area of this sum so the curved surface area formula is this one and the answer is what this right here what I got fine so what I did made the diagram I want the curved surface area write the formula look at what every value is everything is there L is not there I found this triangle from the first term from where I brought this formula or you need to keep the formula and put the values inside I will find the value of L substitute back in the CSA formula and get the answer here this is how you do your this 29th question fine let's move on the last question then 30th on to the 30th question if c theta plus tan theta is equal to p so if c theta plus tan theta is equal to p then then find the value of cosec theta so if you know this thing what is the value of cosec that is how you want to find okay let me see how we can solve this question now this one could be written as seek could be written as 1 by cos theta plus tan could be written as sin theta by cos theta that is equal to p isn't it can't i write like this now on to the lcm i will get cos theta because that is common in both the denominators so cos theta and i just need to simply add these numerators and need to write equal to p clear now cross multiply this thing what i will get 1 plus sin theta is equal to p cos theta p cos theta clear now now one thing I want to tell you when you reach at this place when normally students have a tendency of what is to be found here we need to find the value of cos cosec theta so sine we have here 1 we substitute to the other side and we will just write the 1 by of that sine theta and we will get to feel like okay that is what the value of cosec no it's not like that now it should be brought to a quadratic form so for that reason what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna square squaring both the sides so I'm gonna square both the sides if I square both the sides what I will get 1 plus sine theta the whole square yeah is equal to p cos square cos theta the whole square p cos theta the whole square fine now what i can do when i expand this one i would get one a plus b the whole square which is gonna be the first one square plus two into one into sine theta two sine theta plus the second term b square that is sine square theta that is equal to what can be written here p square cos square theta fine now if what i have told you at first was i don't know i don't want the value of all these cos and all those stuff because ultimately what i i want is cosec so i'm gonna convert this cos into sine as you know the formula that one plus 2 sin theta 
plus sin square theta and I have told in the earlier videos learn this one what is the value of sin square plus cos square is equal to 1 so in that from that equation you will you can make two other things you can you can write in terms of sin square theta or cos square theta from sin square plus cos square is equal to 1 from that what you can write from write for cos square here could be written as 1 minus sin square theta clear sin square theta now i need to multiply it inside so i will get 1 plus 2 sin square plus sin square theta is equal to p square minus p square sin square theta clear I'm writing each and every single step okay so that you get a better perspective sine square and sine square I can see here uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna bring it up front in the equation sine square this will come all the way down to the other side will get plus p square sine square theta p square sine square theta and what else you have plus 2 sine theta already have a sine theta here and I have a 1 and plus 1 and I have a p square which goes that side will become minus p square is equal to 0 yes. so from here what else I can write is that okay I will do it right at the front at the top okay what else I can write from this equation is I can take both the sine as common and what I will get is that if sine square is taken a uh, sine square theta is taken from this term that becomes 1 and from here sine square theta is taken that I will get p square yeah and sine square sine square I'm just taking it outside I'm not writing at front I'm writing it all the way down here that is also the same right now the rest of the terms plus 2 sine theta plus 1 minus P square is equal to 0 yes now it's interesting now can you able to get something like this which is like this one as which could be like you can consider like if this is x square then this becomes x so a x square plus b x plus c hmm? something like that this is gonna be your uh, your a this is gonna be your uh, b and the whole thing becomes your c so something like that you can relate so this becomes a quadratic equation now i need to solve for what sine sine theta fine now before when you have a quadratic equation where normal tendency is to find what is d first right what is d according to the formula when you know the formula what is it like for finding x and all normally you used to write minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a don't you know that formula from that particular formula you need to just make sure that you find the value of sine theta sine theta here fine so if i find d d is nothing but what is there inside this one is d so discriminant okay that is b square minus 4ac that is equal to what is b square here which is 2 square minus 4 into a is nothing but the first value which is 1 plus p square clear 1 plus p square yes and the last one is 1 minus p square which is your c cool and that is that gives me a value this is 4 minus uh, the let the 4 be here and these ones a plus b into a minus b that will be a square minus b square so the first term square which is 1 itself minus the second term p square the whole square that gives me p raised to 4 thus if i multiply inside 4 this minus this becomes minus 4 and i multiply inside and again to this this term it will be plus 4 p raised to 4 and this 4 and this 4 cancel and what i get is 4 p raised to 4 is what pi d is clear now what are what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find the value of sine theta 
So in that case, what I will come up to is, okay, I will write here, okay, sin theta. So to find sin theta, sin theta is nothing but minus b, minus b is minus 2, plus or minus what is inside the root, I already got it, which I will write it inside the root, which is 4p raised to 4 by 2a is nothing but 2 into 1 plus p square. Then that is equal to minus 2 plus or minus root 4 is nothing but 2 p raised to 4 is nothing but p square by 2 is already there let it be because I can see that 2 could be taken from the numerator so that will give me 2 when taken outside I am gonna get minus 1 plus or minus p square by 2 into 1 plus p square. Fine. You can cancel these two. I will get this something like this, which I can split it. I can tell that sine theta is nothing but minus 1, 1 root is minus 1 minus p square by 1 plus p square. The other one is minus 1 plus p square by 1 plus p square. Cool. So this is where we want to want to reach. But I will I will just try it a bit. I will just adjust it. Adjust a bit. And what I can write here is that so the sine theta is equal to but this is not the answer here because I will want to find cosine theta. So sine theta I can take minus outside for the first. So that gives me what? 1 plus p square by 1 plus p square. Thus we can cancel these two and I will get minus 1. So one answer is minus 1. So the other one sine theta what I can get? I can just write p square minus 1 by 1 plus or p square plus 1. Okay, I can write it like this. I just turn around the terms and just can write like this because I cannot cancel it. So these two are what I am getting here minus 1 and p square minus 1. So what you are supposed to find here? I'm supposed to find the value of cosec theta. So I want the value of cosec theta which is equal to 1 by which is nothing but 1 by sine theta. Is it it? So cosec theta is nothing but 1 by sine theta. So I will take 1 by of these things. So the value of this one is one value is still it will be minus 1 and the other one you need to just take the inverse or take the reciprocal of it. So that will give me p square plus 1 by p square minus 1. So this is going to be the second root. So these two are the values of what cosine theta. Fine. So you just simplified what the thing which you need to look into very deeply is squaring these two. Why? Because I don't have anything else to do over here. I can just simply just keep my pens down and can think of like, okay, yeah, it's done. But you need to square it as you know that so squaring the term as I will get like sine square because anyway I want to get a quadratic equation like this. So I have sine square here. So now and then I found the value of d from here. I know this formula from there. I substituted the values and thus I came across the value by inverting the values what I got by 1 by sine. Fine. And this is how you solve this last problem there. And the thing for you to understand is that trigonometry is a very important chapter. You need to practice well. Otherwise, it will be very hard for you to just solve these type of questions. So there will be a, a bit of like hindrance at first, but do practice it. You have some more time left. So do practice it. These type of questions are so easy if you know it and uh, can solve it well. So make sure that you practice well and all the all the best for the exams then write it well. Okay. Then stick around with me and subscribe if you like the channel and pass the link to the other friends so that like 
they get it with the classes and uh, so that's it so i don't hear